Hello and welcome to the next episode of my tutorial series, Subtractive Synthesis on Various Synthesizers. So I'd like to recap what we've covered so far. What we've done is firstly describe the intent of this tutorial series. In particular, there are a lot of tutorial series out there describing subtractive synthesis, but in my experience they either talk about subtractive synthesis in the abstract, or they talk about subtractive synthesis in the context of a particular synthesizer. So what I wanted to provide was an overview of subtractive synthesis using a variety of synthesizers to demonstrate the commonality of features, which will hopefully let you realize that the things you learn on any one synthesizer can be readily transferred to others. Up to this point, we've discussed oscillators, we've discussed the mixer, we've discussed filters, We've discussed envelopes, we've discussed LFOs. Now we're going to discuss the way in which some of these parts can be joined together to make more complicated sounds than we've seen so far. And the way that is done is what we call modulation. So what is modulation? Modulation is the way, for example, the envelope affects the volume of a sound. One system produces a signal which adjusts the value of another parameter, the way the LFO could be used to adjust the filter cutoff. For example, that's another modulation. So we've been using modulation routings all the way through, but we haven't explicitly named them and we haven't necessarily explicitly created them. One of the common ways of creating modulations in a more freeform manner is through what's referred to as a modulation matrix. So this synthesizer has a modulation matrix. It has a series of input controls and a series of output destinations. And through this matrix, we have the capacity to send various signals from sources to destinations. So let's go through the generic process that I've been following, which is pointing out the sections of this synthesizer. This is the oscillator section. Since this is a one oscillator synthesizer, there is no mixer section because there's nothing to mix. This is the filter section. This is the envelope section. This is the LFO section. There's actually a second envelope which can cycle. Cycling allows it to function similar to an LFO. There are no effects on this synthesizer. So hopefully that's given you an overview of the shape of this. And I've described um, a little bit about how the oscillators and so forth work, but this is an atypical synthesizer in that rather than simply having continuous waveforms being generated by the oscillators, the synthesizer has a whole range of different algorithms which you can employ, and those algorithms provide different ways of generating sound. Some of those ways are very much not continuous. So, generator, generator, generator. Filter, filter, filter. So you can hear that we have the capacity for it to speak. Quite unusual. More importantly, when speaking, the sound does not continue indefinitely. So in other words, an envelope is not strictly required to put a time bound on the sound that's being generated. And more importantly than that, on this synthesizer, such a time bound sound generation is available on every algorithm. So when you set a parameter for the envelope here, the envelope is applied directly to the oscillator as well as in a voltage controlled amplifier. So even though the synthesizer is paraphonic, meaning all the oscillators go through one signal path, we can have individually enveloped voices. Let me simply enable that just to illustrate. So you can hear it's almost like a four voice synthesizer. Each time I add a note, we get another sound coming in. In any case, now it's time to start actually designing a sound. Where we're going to start in designing a sound is the oscillator section. So let's have a look at the oscillator types, harmonic, Car plus, virtual analog, wave shaper. So on the way through, a harmonic oscillator struck me as interesting. So let's examine the parameters. The wave parameter sets content. So I think this is the harmonic content. 
so this is a very pure sine wave. And as I turn it up, there are more and more high frequency content being added to it. The next parameter is sculpting. So my guess is sculpting is changing the shape of the waveform. So instead of just the sine wave at the lowest setting, we're getting a different shape. The final parameter is chorus. So worth noting that this synthesizer is mono in its output. It does not output in stereo. Traditionally, chorus is a stereo effect. So this chorus is not actually a stereo chorus. It's a mono chorus that's worth being aware of. So let's pick a sound that we like, and then let's envelope that sound. Let's think about using the filter. Let's think about using the LFO and think about other ways maybe we can use the second envelope to modulate various parameters on this synthesizer because modulation is the key of what we're demonstrating. Okay, so let's, let's have a go. Okay, already sounds pretty interesting. Now we have the oscillator in place we don't have a mixer because there's only one oscillator. So the next section we're going to examine is the filter. The filter is a resonant multi-mode filter supporting low pass, band pass, and high pass. Let's try and turn the filter all the way down, resonance high. So you can definitely hear that the resonance is quite strong. It doesn't quite self-oscillate. I'm going to turn it down um, and so I'm already thinking that it will be interesting to animate that parameter so let's move through our standard process and then let's come back and figure out how to animate so let's shape the sound a little more I feel like the classic pad sound, which is the sound that I'm going for at the moment, is going to have... a slightly longer attack, so I'm more happy with that. Also a... slightly longer release. Um, maybe I'll turn the sustain down a little bit just to make it... make things a little bit more animated. So one of the ways that we can modulate, there's actually a knob provided here, which adjusts the amount of this envelope, which is the second row in the modulation matrix, goes to the filter cutoff, which is this column. So if I turn that, you'll note that that light just came on. So when I use this knob, it's actually creating a modulation matrix routing. So let's experiment. So let me turn it way up and let me turn the cutoff down. Okay, so I think we already have a more interesting shape to the sound. Now let's think about what we can do with the LFO. So what parameters do we have? Well, we definitely have access to these wave and timbre parameters. So I think it might be interesting to try and have the LFO vary that. So sine wave shape for LFO is probably fine. I'm going to turn LFO synchronization off because we're not working to any musical tempo and I'm going to try and route this to the parameters I'm interested in are the wave and the timbre parameters. So they both have columns here. So the routing of the LFO to the wave parameter. I'm gonna turn the rate of the, fill, the LFO up. So any change that I make will become very readily audible. So now I'm adjusting.
set. I think that's reasonable. I'm tempted to have, since the Tombra parameter or sculpting seems to have a sort of inverse effect, I'm going to have a positive modulation from the LFO to the wave and a negative modulation to the Tombra. So this means as one tries to add Tombra complexity, the other's going to move it, uh, remove it. So what I'm hoping is going to happen is we're going to have a tombrel change without so much I like the sound, let me try turning the resonance up a little Okay, so we can see now we have three modulations occurring. We are sending the LFO to the wave parameter, the LFO to the tombra parameter, and we're sending the envelope to the cutoff parameter. Now this synthesizer has um, a form of polyphonic aftertouch. That means that each key transmits some information about technically the surface area of your finger that came in contact with it. This is the press parameter in the matrix. So what I'm going to try and do is experiment by adding some modulation caused by that pressure parameter. But since only the oscillators play polyphonically, we can only use this to adjust these oscillator parameters. If I use the polyphonic aftertouch to adjust the filter, because there is only one filter, it will always affect all of the sounds. This is accessible in the utility preset menu. We can adjust, firstly, velocity amp mod. So this is to what extent the sounds become louder or quieter as I press the keys harder. So I'm going to set some of that. The other thing is pressure mode. So that means what does this row press um, correspond to? Either velocity or aftertouch. So in this case, I want it to correspond to aftertouch. So what am I going to have? So I think I'm going to have aftertouch increase the wave parameter. So pressure row, wave parameter, I think I might have it increase the timbre parameter as well. So, okay, sounding interesting. So we have now some aftertouch modulation. Currently, this uh, LFO, the rate is quite high. So. Okay, so in general, I'm quite happy with the overall timbre that we've got here, but I'd like to have a little bit more movement. Um, that movement, it might be interesting to have some changes in the filter cutoff and resonance that are pulsating at a different rate to the LFO. So how are we gonna do that? Well, this second envelope can run in three modes. It can run in envelope mode, the conventional mode where it triggers in response to a key press. It has run mode, which means when a key is pressed, it starts oscillating. Or it has loop mode, where it's looping indefinitely. So I'm going to set some parameters, but how am I going to know what these parameters sound like? Well, an easy way to preview this is to send that cycling envelope to pitch so we can hear pitch variation. This is not going to be something we want from a sound design perspective, but it is going to make it easy to hear this parameter. So at the moment you can hear a long rise, but a very sudden fall. Another parameter we have access to 
is if we hold shift, we have a shape parameter for the rising and for the falling. Okay, so I think that's interesting. Obviously at the moment I don't actually want this pitch variation, so I can press and hold. And that's cleared that routing. But now I'm going to send that routing where I want it. Look at the columns, however. We have pitch, wave, timbre, cutoff. Where is resonance? Resonance is not a default routing in the modulation matrix, but conveniently we have access to some assignable parameters. So if I press assign, and then I turn the resonance knob. Now that assign one row corresponds to the resonance of the filter. So let's try and modulate the cutoff first. So this is excessive, but interesting. And now the resonance. So you hear the resonance is now very high. Obviously that's excessive. I'm going to try a negative value. Okay, so I think um, I quite like how that's working, but listening to it, this envelope is going way too fast. So I'm going to make the envelope times longer. So I've made them roughly 10 seconds for the rise, 10 seconds for the fall. is a little long. Okay, so I'm hoping now that you can see that the modulation routings allow us to pick certain sources of modulation such as the envelope, the cycling envelope, the LFO, the pressure, we also have access to the key. So that is a modulation where the higher up the keyboard the note that I play is, the greater this value is. So as an example, I might like to negatively adjust the wave and timbre parameters by the key. So let's say the timbre is going to negatively adjusted by the key, as well as the wave being negatively adjusted. So now, Those parameters are being decreased the higher up the keyboard that I play. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine modulation routings that I've already used. And those are not the only routings available to us, but you can imagine from a sound design perspective, we can make interesting modulations by aftertouch, interesting modulations that change as we go up or down the keyboard. We can have interesting modulations of other parameters that are available to us. So for example, we could have the key that we play affect the rate of the LFO. In paraphonic mode, this makes a little less sense because there's only one LFO. So if I play multiple notes, the LFO can only respond to one of those changes. So it's a, a little bit of ambiguity there, just like if I have the pressure adjusting, say, um, the envelope parameters. There's only one VCA and one envelope. Irrespective of that, let's have a quick go at the sound and then let's wrap up. So hopefully there you could hear my use of the polyphonic aftertouch. Sometimes I was picking out one particular note to increase its amplitude. Hopefully you could hear the movement of the LFO and the movement of the cycling envelope. 
and understand why modulation is very important to sound design. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you'll join me for some more videos in this series. And above all, have a good day and goodbye.